Danny watches a lot of television and movies. John does not. Listen in as she tells him about what she's watching and he tries to make sense of it all. Welcome to Watching My Stories with Danny and John. Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Watching My Stories. That sounded really weird. I'm Danny. Uh, I'm John. <laughs> it was like way too perky. This is weird. <laughs> Moving on. It was too weird. It was re- very perky. Well, not, it's not right. Still one of the best intros we've ever That's had. Not so. me. Oh, okay. You know. So everyone, uh, we're going to do something a little different this week. Uh, we only have really one <laughs> thing to talk about. So we thought, should we pass on this week? And just make up for it next week, or should we kind of just roll the dice and maybe have a hodgepodge? We're we're gonna wing it. We're gonna talk about just talk about some things. Like I've got some topics to talk about. He's got some topics. We're gonna talk about that, and then also we're still gonna do our little corner at the end. And because of the Oscars next week, we decided to choose from uh, best picture winners. So we will be talking about those best picture winners that we love, like hate, secretly love, haven't seen, all of that. Mm -hmm. Um, So we'll call that our Oscar corner. It was actually harder than I thought it was going to be. Oh, good. I'm glad. Yeah. You know, not so much for me. Turns out I've seen a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. At least in the last 20 years. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. A lot of them are from the last 20 years. (laughs) Yeah. You know. That's okay. That was the most for me, too. Because, I mean, look, the best picture doesn't usually win so we'll get into that okay so the first thing and the only thing we definitely wanted to talk <laughs> about um was the movie searching oh my god there's gosh. the studio dog timing she's amazing she has the best timing ever she's like oh you're starting bark 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 okay that's my, <laughs> that's my impression of Roxy. um so the movie Searching with John Cho and Deborah Messing. I talked about this a couple months ago when I saw it, but I did get John to watch it last weekend and go. Yeah, as usual, I'm late to the party, so sorry yeah. if you're you know disappointed hearing about this movie for the second time. But I really liked it. Yeah. I liked it. So the trailer didn't make me want to watch it. Mm. But, you know, you did because you said, hey... <laughs> let's watch this <laughs> jerk let's we're gonna watch this <clears throat> um and uh i'm glad i did because i really liked it it was it was different because of the way it was shot right very original yeah i thought um and not annoying so no for, so everyone remembers yeah. it's all shot um either from like a webcam video or security cam video or it's or what would be on your computer screen, basically. Right. If you were watching television on your computer screen, like a news report. Right. And then know, a FaceTime like, pops up and he yeah. has a conversation with someone on yeah. FaceTime and all that. And you'd think it would get tedious, but it doesn't at all. It, it, it actually helps because there's this huge mystery going on. And so because you're kind of doing it through this lens, which is different than a camera lens where you get to be this fly on the wall. This felt like you were a little bit more distant. You were one more layer removed, which helped to make you feel like, I don't know what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. No. (laughs) I thought I was going. I know. That's okay. I'm sorry. No, I I was actually going to say a lot of that. So thank you. It would have taken an hour. Oh, come on. (laughs) I see. (sighs) Thank you. You're welcome, everybody. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Okay. Um. Yeah, I really liked it. Uh, it, it, it what is what is my it? point exactly? So what? So I take a little bit of time between thoughts. Okay, get back to. Now I can't remember what I was gonna say. Mm. So this is how it goes, folks. This is a this is a little okay. view into our. <laughs> get back to what me. is your problem? Get to it. Why? Because okay, that's that's. I I don't know what to say now, so I like. Okay, it. what did you like about it? How did you think the mystery uh, unfurled? How did they tell that story? Did you like the way they told it? It was really all about how they shot it. That's what I liked about it. The mystery, yes. Yeah, so it was a good mystery. Didn't see it coming until well, it was at three quarters of the way through. It was kind of easy to see what was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but the way you know the details and that, uh, I thought it unfolded in a really clever way. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it was all about how it was presented yeah. to the viewer. So, you know, it was just, it was really good and not annoying or irritated like I, I thought it was going to be. Right. That's it. Done. So you don't normally like these kind of movies. I don't. Um, You know, and, and uh, this one isn't 
super like suspenseful or anything. It truly, I would put it truly in a mystery category where you, you, you want to figure it out, but also you're enjoying the ride so much on this one. Like for me, I was so thrilled. I couldn't figure it. I figured it out like right before they started telling us. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. But you know, I, I normally don't do that. I normally don't like to sit back. I like to figure it out. But this one, it was so much fun. And mm-hmm. all the little twists and turns where you thought it was the brother, or, you know, you, you, maybe she ran away on her own, like all that sort of stuff. Again, just to remind everyone, John Cho plays a father whose daughter disappears. And so he spends the entire time looking for her. I think it's like five days we go past, we go through. Something like and that. And Deborah Messing is the chief detective on the case, helping him try to figure out. And so John Cho starts going to all her classmates and people that, you know, are on her computer. Luckily her laptop was kept at home and, and starts to figure out that there are things going on with his daughter that he didn't really know about. Um, And so it's, it's a really interesting and it's one of the uh, most sad beginnings of a movie. It's very sad. In the yeah. Beginning. The mo- if you've seen the movie up, it was very reminiscent of that. Yeah. You know, feeling that Pixar movie because it, you know, chronicles the progression of a woman's demise. Right. His wife, uh, a wife and death. a mother. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's very sad because you, you, you know, it's coming. Right. But, but the way they do it is, but again, is really the way touching. They, yeah. And the way yeah. they do it, it's just smart. Yeah. And, and you kind of need that because we don't see the daughter in the movie. So we needed to get connected mm-hmm. to the family right. and to Don- John Cho to know what he's going through and what he's already been through. Yep. Um, so they, it was just really smart. I really, I, 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 this is my second time watching it and I picked up on so many clues that I hadn't, and I can't wait to watch it again. Cause I think I'll pick up on even more stuff. Yeah. That's, and if that's your thing, then that's cool. Um, I'll pick up on them too, but that's not, that's not important to me. I never go through <laughs> a movie like this trying to figure it out right i just enjoy what's being presented and if i if i can figure it out yay for me yay for and, you. and if i can't you know oh shocker you yeah. know at the end and okay good um one of the things i kept thinking about was you know the question you asked what did i like about the movie and i like john cho i like deborah messing um uh, but and they did they performed really great they did some good uh acting performances in this movie but it wasn't, I didn't like it because of them. You mm. could have inserted just about anybody in those roles, and I probably would have liked it just about as much. Mm. So it's really about the way the movie was presented and how unique it was, I mm. think, is what I really liked. Because John Cho did a great job. He, he did, and he's one of those that I just, I love in everything. He's yeah, good in he, everything he does. So to me, I don't want to think of anyone else in it because I really do like him. Well, yeah, but the, so when I, whenever I really, really, really like a movie, mm-hmm. it's one of the things I do. Well, what did I like about it? Was it the person in that role or was it, you know, the actual movie itself and the way the, it was told? Right. Right. Or the cine- cinematography or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and in this particular case, it was really just how the story was told um, and, and how it was done. Okay. Uh, just uh, really clever, really good. Good. Yeah. Rank it. Oh, I give it four out of five. Good. Yeah. I don't remember what I gave it, but it was probably about that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, any other movies you want to, or things that you want to talk about that are movie related? Because then I'll move on to TV. Uh, movie related. So I caught probably the last hour, maybe, of Won't You Be My Neighbor. Oh. Um, the documentary on uh, Mr. Uh, Rogers. Mr. Rogers. Uh-huh. And it was, man, it brought back a lot. It was very moving. Uh, it, it managed to anger me uh, <laughs> in quite a few parts. Yeah. I don't know how much I didn't see. I think I th- you missed the first hour, so you saw the last hour. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, wa- I definitely want to go back and catch that first hour. Yeah, you're going to have to do that by yourself. I mean, I, I already saw it, and mm-hmm. so, yeah, we came in, and I realized, yeah, I can't make it through again. Uh, I was such a mess watching yeah. it the second time with you. It's it's uh it's too much for me. Um in a good way. Like mm-hmm. for everyone who's listening, it's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Everyone should watch it, but there's just a lot of emotion there and a lot of um I think it touches everyone in different ways and, and uh I'm not going to 
I'm not going to watch it for a while because it's too emotional. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but it's really good and you definitely should see the first hour. And one of the things that, that made me mad, <laughs> I'm very angry with him. Very angry with no, him. No, not with him, but with people who were pitching him grief yeah. about... Millennials. Yeah. Yeah. And how he ruined things and that sort of thing. Right. And I... Wow, well, I mean, what a cop out! That is such crap. First off, it was Fox News that was putting that on him, and they can't do the math because he started in the '60s, so that would have been you, your yeah, generation, all, all the pe- and then it would have been my generation before it got to the millennials. All the parents of millennials yeah. would have been ruined, right? Which right? they kind of—that's kind of why the millennials well, are. Ruined. But mm. it's you know, it, his message never changed. So if his message had been was the same in the 60s, then all of us would have had the same problem. So they just didn't do the math and they're just well, trying to blame someone. And, yeah. You know. And, you know, they completely. Well, so part of it is they just missed the point of what he was saying. Right. Right. Yeah. And he wasn't saying that everybody should walk around being a prima donna because they're special. What he was saying is there's something special about everybody. Right. No. Every, well, every every child is unique and special in their way what he was what his his overall belief was just that you know everyone's the thing with fox news was they were saying oh kids get a trophy just for showing up his thing was telling people that um telling kids you don't have to do anything special to be loved that Mm -hmm. was his that was his message is that your parents and the people around you should love you for you and not just because you win a trophy. Right. That that was the point and they were missing that entirely. Yes. Yeah. And and the the whole participation trophy thing mm-hmm. I don't think was ever started by kids. It was started by the parents of kids. Right. Right. Who wanted their kid to be number one and just because he didn't win. Well, they didn't want a crying kid at home because they didn't win and get the trophy. Yes. So. I think it's shortcoming and parenting parenting uh, <laughs> parenting as, it, as yes. it's often s- said <laughs> versus a problem with the kids but anyway that that really pissed me off um yeah you know yeah so he, you'll go back it's on hbo now everyone yeah. i think pbs even has it on every now and then too so um you can definitely go and check that out yeah. won't you be and, and the biopic is coming out when tom hanks thing i think it's next year 2020 next year. okay yeah i yeah. think it could be at the end of this year for oscar so i don't know i haven't seen it yet mm-hmm. he'll probably win if it does <laughs> um so i before we switch to tv i just wanted to talk about uh movies i am excited for this year um they these are all the big ones that we all know about there's of course a lot of little movies <laughs> that i'm gonna love and i'm excited for but these are the very you know the big blockbuster ones that i'm thrilled for this year so um and you know it's it's the middle of february i've only been to the theater once this year twice uh two three times i mean like there hasn't been a reason even with all these oscar movies i think i still have two left to to see and i just i'm not into these movies for some reason this year um but first coming up in a couple weeks is captain marvel very Mm -hmm. excited for that right Uh, because she's going to be integral in avengers 4 end game um and saving everyone so that's going to be really cool uh then at the end of march the new jordan peele movie us uh, i cannot wait what a messed up looking thing man! i have watched that trailer at least 10 times and i giggle every time but i know in the theater <laughs> i'm gonna be scared out of my mind i, I hope you crap wait. your pants that's not very nice i hope you do that's not nice it's not I I I do though because you think Mr. Rogers would tell someone that. Oh, I'm not Mr. Rogers in any way whatsoever. <laughs> um, there's also the Shazam movie coming out. Um, Shazam. Yeah, with uh, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just forgot his name. Zachary Levi uh, is playing Shazam. I'm excited about that. It looks cute. Oh yeah, I remember yeah. seeing that. Yeah. Um, we just saw the trailer for Long, Long Shot. Long Shot. Oh my God, this is I'm. I didn't even know this movie was was out there. Right. Until this morning. Yes. And, <laughs> oh, it was, it was, so you made so, me watch the trailer, and then we watched the... Uh, Seth and Charlize on Ellen. Ellen. So, Long Shot is with Seth Rogen and Charlize Theron um, and June Diane Raphael, and 
Uh, she plays the Secretary of State who's going to run for president. And she used to babysit Seth Rogen when he was a kid. And now he's a journalist. And it's a romantic comedy. She decides she wants him to write for her on the campaign. And, you know, they end up. It looks like they end up falling in love. Yeah. Um, but the thing that excites me is it's Seth kind of getting back to the reasons we like Seth. Right. Like um, the knocked up Seth. Yeah. Not, I mean, not that stoner guy, just. The, his the, funny the real right the, like neighbor the, the real good delivery comma uh comedy yeah uh, it, it's it's yeah you know the 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 interview and and sausage party and the, i love the, sausage party uh, yes but it's it's a different mm-hmm. it's a different thing yeah and we we really started liking seth rogan because of how he was in knocked up and yeah yeah you know um zach and miri Things mm-hmm. like that. And this is more of that. So right. I'm excited. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. That yes. comes out May 3rd. Um, the summertime, we've got The Lion King. Cannot wait. Yeah. It's my favorite animated Disney film. This live action with the cast that they have. I, I can't wait. Yep. Um, Toy Story 4. Going to be great. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm extremely ambivalent about that. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I liked one. I, I really liked one. I liked two. Three was the best. I don't know. I guess I'm weird then because I... You are. Well, we know that, but I, I didn't... Three didn't do a lot for me. You didn't cry your eyes out? I cry my eyes out all the time, but that's, you know, I don't know. Okay. Um, Spider-Man. The new Spider-Man is uh, Far From Home. Um, looks really good. Looks like he uh, he ends up in Europe and things are chaos. Well so he's soon. literally far from home. Yes. Okay. Um, if anyone questions why I say Spider Man, I think I should probably <laughs> talk about that because they might listen and go, "What an it. idiot!" <laughs> You're pronouncing it like a lawyer. <laughs> so there's a joke on Friends, which everyone knows is my favorite show, that Chandler was. Was it Chandler? Oh, now I'm now I'm second so much guessing for your myself. Favorite episode was saying it's not my favorite episode. Um, oh. was saying that uh, he they were sitting around the the living room and they're like, why is it not why Spider Man? Why is it Spider Man? I think it's Phoebe who asked that. It's a great story. I have no idea. <laughs> and they're like, well, it's not his last name. He's a Spider Man. You know, he's not Phil Spider Man. <laughs> and Ever since then, I've just always pronounced the Spider-Man because I find it funny. So it's ingrained in me. I can't change it. Okay. So anyway, Spider-Man comes out this summer. Very excited about that. Um, Let's see. Hobbs and Shaw. I know you won't watch. But yeah, I'm not interested in that. Very excited all. about that. Love the Fast and Furious sure. movies. And of course, The Rock and Jason Statham. And Idris Elba is in Hobbs well, and Shaw. Okay. Hello, my trio. So, yeah, I, I understand the appeal. <laughs> um. But, you know, I, yeah, it's just I not know, my thing. I know, it's not your thing. That's okay. You know what is your thing? What is my thing? Downton Abbey. Now I'm in. Yeah. This man here <laughs> won't go see Hobbs and Shaw, but will stand in line for Downton Abbey. That's great. Uh, oh. I don't think I'll stand in line. I know, it was a joke. Oh. All right. Oh gosh. Uh, Frozen 2. Very excited for that. We just got the first teaser. Can't wait. Yeah, I didn't get it. And... The best. They just stopped. They just finished shooting yesterday. Oh, my. Star Wars Episode Nine comes out at Christmas. Oh. Very excited. Is is your, your fella featured? Who? Kylo Ren. I don't know if he's featured. Okay. But he's there. Okay. <laughs> he's there. I mean, he is the enemy, so he's you have somewhere. to assume that. Okay. You know, this is the last one. So they still haven't, uh, they still haven't announced the title. Of this one. So so, so the last one, mm-hmm. was that Rogue One? Nope. That was not part of this trilogy. That was a Star Wars story. Oh, God. I can't keep track. Last one All was right. The Last Jedi when Luke died. So we don't know the title of this one, but the titles have, have gone together. So we had The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi. So we assume the title for episode nine will finish that sentence. How is it going to finish the sentence? I don't know. Uh, the Force Awakens. The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi. Right before his death. Dun, dun, dun. Right before his death is not a very good title. Well, how, of that movie. Well, well, you're gonna you're gonna seal up the franchise. <laughs> Somebody's gotta die. 
Well, if we believe that she's the last Jedi, we don't want her to die. Oh. Do we? No. You're right. Okay, so we'll move on now. We're going to well, move on to TV. This little Lucy Goosey isn't Lucas, going so well. Lucas Films and I are still working on the title, so we'll we'll get back to you. Yeah. <laughs> Before he dies. <laughs> Before his death. <laughs> oh, sorry. Get it right if you if you're going to pitch me crap, get it right. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to TV. Just want to talk about a few things. Um, the first is a new show that we actually watched this week. Uh, I don't know that John's going to stick with it, but Miracle Workers with Steve Buscemi and Daniel Radcliffe. Yep. Um, I found it really funny, really smart, clever, um, and I'm excited. It's just a one little, you know, hopefully a one season. They keep screwing these things up by... Telling us it's one season and then it does well and they have to give us a second season. It makes me angry. But I'm hoping it's just this one season. They have to now, we now know that there's a couple that they have to make kiss or else in two weeks or else God, played by Steve Buscemi, is going to (laughs) blow up Earth. And it's just super, super smart. Like they're all in heaven incorporated and they all have jobs to keep the Earth going or ruining it. Um, Yes. And answering prayers or volcanic safety or you know whatever it was it was just dirt like she came from the dirt department yeah <laughs> you know, it's, yep. it's just super cute i mean it's a little bit like it's on that line of a good place where you kind of just envision what's happening out there and it's a different take and steve buscemi as god is kind of like the best thing ever yeah that, it's really good with him that's the best part of it yeah definitely yeah um, um, i'm not quite as enamored with it as as you are i thought it was clever I enjoyed it. I am going to keep giving it a shot. So I'll stick with it. For now. For, well, I make no promises. Right. right? It's got to keep me. But it's not a. It's not one of those shows I watch no matter what, you know. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, so that was Miracle Workers. The other show we watched together, Mass Singer, is still on. Yep. I'm not as enamored with it as we were when we first talked about this after the first episode. Well, the novelty is kind of wearing off. Yeah, because we kind of know, at least as far as I'm concerned, we know everyone that's left except for the monster. We know who the bee yeah. is, we know the bunny, we know the peacock, and we know the lion. Right. So it's just the monster left right. that we are still... And I and I do appreciate having that mystery still. Um, and now it feels like we're down to, you know, I think the lion should go first and um we'll see but i don't know you know now whoever leaves it's going to be a pretty big deal when they leave you know because they're all good now yeah um my thing is i really can't stand the judges people and if anyone can hear me out there replace them for the second season it did get renewed give us good people it makes me angry we've gotten to the point where i will fast forward through the judges because they actually make me angry they're being so stupid yeah it's one thing to be irritating it's another thing to be dumb yeah but when you're irritatingly dumb it's (laughs) just more than a person can bear i mean you know some of the some of the outlandish guesses they make you think you you have to think that they've been instructed to just make shit up you think so but and you know just spew out stuff that they think can't possibly be right because that can't possibly be right what people are thinking yeah they're like oh she breathed air air it must be michael jordan you know it's like like weird (laughs) they make the weirdest things where they're like oh she she she's holding a flower flower it must be bambi's friend you know it's like they come up with the dumbest i things and they're missing the actual clues i can do without every single cutaway to the judge when they're do- going through a clue package right cut away to a judge going oh yep it, yeah like you said it it there's air it must be jordan yeah you know or, or like when they're singing and i'm yeah. trying to hear the person sing right and they're showing us the judges making some stupid oh she's seasoned oh that person can sing and it's like shut up and let me hear the person singing because right. i'm trying to make sure it's the right voice for who i right. think it is it drives me crazy. <clears throat> yeah. It's it, it and and here's the other thing. Oh, here I we think go. Jenny McCarthy on there her title is like pop culture wizard or something like that. Like okay. Nicole and and Alan his father. Whoops. Robin are supposed to be the singers, which Nicole has has no ear at she all doesn't. for singers. Well, if she does, she's hiding it really well right. because 
you know, she should have a much better input than she's right. showing. None at all. So I've been fine with Robin's input. He has a decent yeah, ear. He's been, you know, he throws out some weird stuff too, which partly makes, makes me think they've been instructed. They've been to instructed, do that. right. But he's usually, I think he's gotten the last three. Yeah. Right. Um, but Jenny, for a pop culture specialist or whatever she's supposed to be, she knows nothing. All of these people are big in pop culture. Their clues are so obvious. Mm -hmm. And she misses putting all of these things together that I'm certain 90% of us at home are just like, hello, that's so obvious. That's there. That's there. And if you're supposed to be the pop culture person, you would know these without even needing to look anything up. Yeah. So it just drives me nuts. So the, the show itself is fun. Still, kind of. It's a little drawn out. Doesn't it feel like it's been a long time? I think they could have consolidated well, this a bit, too. They could have consolidated before they did from the different The groups. two, yeah. Um, but now they're down to five? I believe so. Yeah, so the problem now is it's going to get more drawn There's out. There's only two shows left, I think. Oh, so do they get down to the final three and th- then pick the one? Or? I think so. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I'm not well, entirely sure how it's going to be structured. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, well, that'll prevent it from getting being too bad. Right. Um, so do you want to talk about uh, our guesses for the monster? Um, I don't think I have guesses anymore. I'm that lost. This last week did throw us because, yeah. because we were convinced um, previously that it was going to be, and I, we should have looked up the guy's name. Uh, from Boys to Men, oh. who who we thought it was going to be somebody like a Boys to Men. Uh, what is his name? Wait, ooh, starts with a W. Yeah. Um. Or or a Bobby Brown. I never thought it was Bobby Brown. I thought he it might have been that, sing that good. Well, you know, he could back in the day, but not now. Yeah. So, but this last week, yeah, the accent was throwing me off. Yeah, a lot. had a different different tone to it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, it's, I am enjoying it. I, and what I'm, what I keep, what I said the last two weeks and now I'm going to do it is go on YouTube and watch all the clip packages, the clue packages for the Mm -hmm. monster Mm -hmm. and watch them in a row. And maybe something will stand out where I can really get it. Um, cause yeah, I'm a little, uh, I'm very lost on that one. It's weird. And so, yeah, but we have the other four and I will be shocked I mean, I'll be really, really stunned if we're wrong on any of them. Uh, I think we've got. A I'm name. not. Yeah, I'm not wrong. Do, on do you want to p- tell people our guesses just in case <laughs> somebody's listening to this? Um, I guess. Okay. Sure. I guess. Yeah, we're not spoiling anything because no one knows for sure. But I know for sure that these are the four. <laughs> I do. We do know for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you had just to be just to be clear, you had Latoya Jackson fit peg before I did. Yeah. You you had that yes. I mean, we talked about that. Well, like we've weeks had. Ago. Ev- I think the only one we've had them all figured out. Mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I d- I would I didn't. So the first one, Antonio Brown. Oh yeah, that one. No. I d- I just still don't know who that is. So yeah, I didn't. And I didn't one. have Tommy Chong. You had it right that I day. I had it right that episode before they unveiled them. Yeah. But I didn't have it until then, and right. usually, you know, these four. But we had almost all of these on the very first episode. We knew Terry Bradshaw. I knew Donnie Osmond as the peacock. I knew Joey was the rabbit. It was so funny because you're watching this, and I swear to God, the first five bars of Donnie at the peacock singing. Yeah. Oh, it's Donnie Osmond. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, wow. Well, Don't okay. mess with that. And I think that was the first performance, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. It was as soon as And I was, was like, home. oh, okay, this show's going to be fun because. <laughs> You know, there goes all the mystery. Yeah. Yeah. The same thing with Joey, who's the rabbit. Joey Fatone. Joey Fatone. Yeah. Knew him right off the bat. Um, We knew, we knew Margaret Cho the first episode. Yeah. We knew, we weren't entirely sold on Tori Spelling. We, I think we had like two or three guesses for that one. Well, we but, thought it she was been, one of them. Yeah. Uh, I got a little jammed up with Drew Barrymore. Oh yeah, that's a um, sense. and I'm not sure why, but yeah, yeah that never made yeah. sense. But you had Ricky Lake. I had Ricky Lake. Out. That took that took a couple episodes. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So we've done pretty well. So yeah, the five left are Donny Osmond is the peacock, Joey Fatone is the rabbit, mm-hmm. the bee it's Gladys is Gladys Knight, Gladys Knight. Mm-hmm. the lion is Rumor Willis, Rumor Willis, and then there's the monster, yep. which we don't know. Yeah, yet. that's gonna that's the interesting one, and and. Uh, I think 
if if you go by talent, mm-hmm. the monster should be the next one out. Oh, see, I don't agree with that. I think rumor should. See, I think rumor's better than the monster. But it won't. The monster's going to win. I, I already told you that. The monster's either the monster or they'll keep Gladys around. One of those two are going to win. Uh, see, I, I think I... Joey or Donnie's going to be out next, and it'll probably be Donnie. Really? Yeah. No. That's not what the audience likes. They don't like his type of voice. This is why I'm not a member of the audience. That's right. Because that, that's, that, uh, you know, I'm going to stop watching. Donnie, it, to me, it would be down to Donnie and Joey at the Going end. Out. At the oh, end. Oh, should yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I agree with that. But that's also hard to, Gladys is so good. Um, yeah, so that's the Mass Singer, you guys, mm-hmm. if you're watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, uh, another show I just wanted to touch on, because again, it's another one that we watched together, and we've talked about it a few times on here, is I'm Sorry. That's the show I was going to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, you know, we're in the second season. We're in the middle of the second season. And it's still, I think this season's funnier than the first one. Yes. Yes. It really is. Yes. It's just, um, she is, they've heightened the awkwardness. (laughs) Like, you know how like Seinfeld was defined by its nothingness, right? It was a show about nothing. Yeah. But it was also a show about bad people. Like they were, they were not good people. And that's what was funny. Yes. This show is defined by its awkwardness. Yes. She just forces us to be in a position where it is so incredibly awkward that you're squirming and laughing. And because luckily we can laugh. We're not actually, you know, and it's a TV show. I get it. But it's just hysterical. Yes. Like when she goes to buy condoms and she's standing next to a 16 year old and they're waiting for someone to come and unlock the cabinet. <laughs> and we're, we must be standing there for probably a minute, but on television, <laughs> a minute is forever of just standing in this weird awkwardness. Yeah. Yes. And it's just like, it, it's all of that. The children, the child now can read. So what comes out of the child reading? Cause now she can read mommy's text messages. Um, the in this last one she had a sex dream about her daughter's kindergarten teacher this man who wears a suit and mustache as a kindergarten teacher um that was hysterical um you know it's just yeah. always these awkward awkward moments yeah um it's it's, it's hysterical so, done in such a great way oh my god and yeah. her and uh, andrea so this is andrew yeah. savage's show Andrew Savage with Tom Everett Scott, who plays her husband. They are the funniest. It is the best chemistry on television. Yeah. It really is. On television now. Like, I have my handful of favorite couples of TV of all time. They are now in that. And I might have to knock someone out because of it. Yeah. You know, it's like... So, my favorite couples are um, Chandler and Monica. (laughs) I know who your number one is going to be. I don't remember the character names. But it's got to be mad about you. No. No? No. Oh, no. You, you no. think you know a person. Yeah. Paul no. Reiser and Helen Hunt? Yeah, no. Jamie no. and... Paul Buckman. Oh, yeah, okay. Buckman? No, no, that's from their wedding. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, Chandler and Monica, um, Marshall and Lily from How I Met Your Mother, um, Leslie and Ben from Parks and Rec, and... Um, and of course I'm blanking now from happy endings. Um, Brad and, uh, what is her name? I don't know. I can't help you. I'm, uh, anyway, David Wayne's Jr.'s character. So those are my four top characters. So now I'll just have five. I'll have Andrea and Mike on there. Wow. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yep. See, they, they would have supplanted every one of those for me, but I right. didn't, but yeah, I didn't watch Parks and Rec yeah. like you did and. And, you know, how I met your mother and that sort of thing. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, as long as they're in there somewhere because they deserve For to be. For sure. Yeah. they really are the they're best. They're fantastic. <clears throat> and I thought it was kind of funny that this, this I think it was this last episode where Andrea had to go. Jane. It was Brad and Jane. Sorry. Go ahead. Just popped into my head. Okay. Thank you. From Happy Ending. Okay. Uh, Andrea had to go to uh, her gynecologist. Uh, yes. And Adam Scott. <laughs> oh, so that was great, but that you know something that just occurred to me <laughs> even better was when she had to get her her pit boobs removed, her arm tits, her arm tits. <laughs> <laughs> she had breast tissue that had formed right. two smaller breasts in her armpits, and which had, was real. Andrew Savage actually had to have that surgery. Done. Yeah, it yeah. So real. much of the yeah. show is based on true events, so right. it's kind of funny. Uh, 
it, it's entertaining and it's really nice of her to share this stuff with us because it's <laughs> you know kind of random but um and she's just coming out of her anesthesia and tom ever scott is like so oh, part of yeah. your recovery process yeah you know and he can't get away with it she no. calls him out immediately right. And you know the the un- the discomfort right. you feel for him. <laughs> right. Oh my god! It's so it's perfect. Like, he tried, like he finally tried to have he, one up on he, her. He finally tried something, and boy, even he, on drugs, she still was. Just she like... crushed him in an epic way. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, oh, it's, it's perfect. So it's yeah. so good. It's a wonderful show. It's on True TV. Um, called I'm sorry. It's the funniest thing on television, and uh, I haven't heard about a third season. But if they take the oh. show away from me, I'm gonna be so angry. If, if this show gets canceled, somebody <laughs> has to pick it up, <laughs> and it would be it would be a perfect it would be like perfect HBO on Hulu or, or some, Netflix, yeah. something where they can get away with just go for it language that they be always beat. beep out. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. The mom and the father, Martin Mall. Uh, it's all f- everyone on there is funny. So yes. yeah, check it yes. out. Um, I also just wanted to talk quickly about Schitt's Creek because, again, it's one of the funniest shows out there, and it cracks me up. And we're in the middle of the season for this year, and oh my god! I mean, if I could give, it, there should be a new category of award for Catherine O'Hara and her performance in the show. Who she's one of the funniest people ever, but. My God, what she does on the show. It's just funny. And, and, oh, hang on, Uh-oh. everybody. Oh, nope. <laughs> she took one look and said, nope. Crazy dog turn around the house. Um, she, like, the way she pronounces words in this show are worthy of an award by itself. Okay. Let alone how everyone in the show, all, all of them deliver their lines and everything. It's just, Again, it's Schitt's Creek. If you're not watching it, um, it's on Netflix, all the previous seasons. Um, and then it's on like pop TV. Yeah. You know, right now. You know it's kind of weird now. That, you know, I think about this from time to time. Hang on. Sorry, everybody. Oh, the mail's here. Oh, the mail's here. This is a problem. Oh, sorry. That's a problem. <laughs> That's why we give him a $25 <sighs> Oh yeah, the Amazon that does card it. at the end of the year because he hazard pay. Anyway, I I love Eugene Levy and I love Catherine O'Hara. I don't know why I'm not watching this. I don't know either. I just for some reason I can't get into it. Sorry. Okay, so sorry, everybody. Um, <laughs> okay, so we're just. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Um, no, that's it. Are you sure? Yeah, honorable mention to Drunk History, which oh, I think the yeah. new season is going on right now, and yep. it's still. It's st- it's still so clever and <laughs> good, is. and they keep getting the best people to do it. Yeah, it's just one. Uh, it's and look, I learn every episode. <laughs> so here's the thing, and I I saw what's his face, uh, Waters. What's his name? The creator, Derek. Yeah, I saw him on Derek. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jason Van Yeah. Um, I saw Derek on on uh, Daily Show, and he was talking about um how they do this and and basically you know the person needs to really learn the story they learn all of that and then they fact check everything and they will not show anything that isn't factual so even though it's funny and there's a lot of that this is true these are true stories and they're factual so when i say that i learn something on every episode i do they talk about a lot of these smaller stories in history that i've never heard of and I love learning these things, and and it just it cracks me up. But it's true. So yeah, check yeah. out Drunk History for sure. Oh my god, on Comedy Central. Ha, have you so so you see you still watch it regularly? Yep. Right? Has there been a better episode than the Jason Ritter? Um, it depends what you you know. <laughs> look, we that was a moment in time that I'm not sure you can get back, but uh. No, I'm not sure. So, okay, what he's talking about, you oh guys, is they used to, in the very, I think it was the first or second season, they did, um, they always have a theme to every show, and they were doing <laughs> themes by cities. And in the Atlanta episode, um, <laughs> there was the story of a guy who took down the KKK in Atlanta at the time because he he infiltrated the KKK and then got all their passwords and that sort of thing and called them into the Superman radio show. And like, it was, it's a great story. It's a very interesting story of how all this happened. And it's true. And it's true. 
Uh, so Jason Ritter um, was playing the guy who infiltrated the KKK. And I forget the guy's name who was telling the story. I, I forget. But when he it. gets drunk, because we've seen it a few times now, when he gets drunk, he sneezes. Yeah. And Jason Ritter was, and Phil Hartman was, not Phil Hartman. Oh, my God. I can't believe I said that. Wow. R.I.P. Um, what's his name? Kevin Nealon. Thank you. Um, he was he was like playing the head KKK <laughs> guy, and Jason Ritter's in his full. Oh, and Matt Walsh was in that one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so Jason Ritter's in the dunce cap, you know, and the robe and all that, and uh, and the guy telling the story starts sneezing. So Jason Ritter in the story has to <laughs> sneeze, and it's hysterical, and you can hear. Oh yeah, my god! It's I think the, we watched that uh, one little sneeze like over and over. I mean, it's actually like five sneezes in a row, but it's hysterical. <clears throat> we have two things saved on the DVR. <laughs> Right. Whenever I've had a really bad day, yeah, I'll I'll come home and you'll play. You'll p- either put on this, yeah, or you'll put on uh, Debbie Downer from yeah, Disneyland. From Disneyland, yeah. And it's n- neither fail to yeah, uh, just pick me right up. <laughs> it's just the best. Oh my god, you'll you'll laugh hard. Yeah, if you, if you catch can go this on. I know Drunk History is on Netflix. If you go on <clears> and find the Atlanta episode. Um, it's definitely worth it. And I've, I mean, I, I think I even, uh, I added Jason Ritter at one point that that was the best. And I think he responded or liked it or something, which was hysterical. Yeah. So, um, anyway, he just had a new baby. So congrats. Oh, hey, congrats, Jason Ritter. Okay. Um, so that's that. Uh, so now we're going to move on to our best picture Oscar winners corner. <laughs> <laughs> I call it Oscar's best picture winners. Oh wait, my! But I don't gosh. know who Oscar is. Um, there is a story about that. Anyway, I know it's somebody's uncle. <laughs> <laughs> the monkey's his uncle. Um, so named after a hot dog. <laughs> okay, best picture winners that you love. Okay, um, and a lot of these are from the from. You know, the, yeah, he the didn't watch movies recent. before he met me, so I didn't know movies existed. <laughs> um, I think my favorite, so number one, is is actually Forrest Gump. Did you not put them in the the normal way? I did. I did. Oh, okay. Oh, so, so usually you... when I put three in a category, uh-huh. it's because they're all real, real close. Uh-huh. <clears throat> this one is is hands down, but there were others I wanted to talk about. Okay. Um. So, so Forrest my, Gump. Forrest Gump is is my favorite really unique um and you're just not going to be tom hanks um i know people have but they shouldn't have um <laughs> and he did win the oscar for that yes yeah um my other so i so these are did he or yeah. did he win for castaway no. he won two in a he row he won for philadelphia yeah forrest gump and philadelphia two okay. in a row i did my research oh but i actually remembered that okay um honorable mentions for me Wait, uh, are you still on movies you love? Yes. Then what is an honorable mention? Do you love it? Because or I love these. Yeah. So just you have three in that category. That yeah. happens every week. So why are you changing it all? Like I just said, usually they're very, very close and I can't exactly put them in an order. These I can. Forrest Gump is number one. Okay. The other two are Argo and Spotlight. Okay. Go. I'm so confused. I can't help that. Okay. So my first one that I love is Argo. And people, okay. man, I know there's probably people who just turned this off because they're like, seriously, they like Argo. I love Argo. It's like suspenseful. Yeah, I don't and, know why you wouldn't like it. Uh, no one did. Um, well, it won the best picture. That doesn't mean anything. Most of these most of these movies shouldn't have won. <laughs> really? There's but always enough, something better. But enough people voted for it that they had to have liked well, it. Well... The number one rule in Hollywood is that if you do a movie about Hollywood, it will win. <laughs> and so that's why Argo won. Um, but needless to say, I, needless to say, I still love the movie. And I really, um, they changed a lot of history for it, but I still really like it. Yes. Um, and my second one is The Departed that I love. Ooh. I love The Departed. And yeah. for me, the weaving of that story and all of the performances in it. Oh, love it. Yeah. I didn't I didn't know where to put that, so it's actually nowhere on my sheet. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. It's classic. Yeah. Instant classic. Yeah. 
for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, best picture winners you like? Um, Terms of Endearment. You've seen that? I have seen that. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, heavy. Not, you know, not a comedy. <laughs> no, it is not. Um, and The Godfather. Never seen it. Yeah. Also not a comedy. Oh, it's not? Nope. <laughs> Despite what you've heard. Despite the yeah, advertising, it's I not a comedy. I haven't seen any of The Godfathers. <clears throat> I have no desire. Yeah, it's... I'm not a I'm not a gangster person. Yeah, I don't like those movies. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I'm gonna stop stop there. Yeah, uh, movies I like. Here's the thing. Here we go. <laughs> when I normally when we're normally doing this category, um, I I always put things in here that like are ones that I watch over and over again. Mm-hmm. That's how I kind of gauge where i am Mm -hmm. now that you know like and that's why i always at the end put on honorable mentions because you know if we're talking about julia roberts movies or something like that her bet like aaron brockovich is never in my list it doesn't mean it's not fantastic and she was wonderful in it and didn't deserve the oscar or whatever it's just i don't watch it all the time right so i'm always gonna put the other one the other ones in there these lists are very personal so that's what i did with this too and that's so like i don't think argo is the best ever of best picture winners right it's one that i watch often and so that's why i'm gonna put it in here okay. so now we're on movies i like it's the same thing spotlight is on my list here um i we've now been watching it <laughs> kind of once a week or so yeah it's on rotation on the movie it, channel so which yeah i don't know what that says about us but it's just it's to well, me like i go back to all the president's man yes. which is one of my top movies of all time this was the only thing that's happened since that movie that felt the same, yeah. had the same sort of mystery and um, unraveled the story in a way that all the presidents spent it. It's being able to watch and appreciate the investigative process. Right. Which, you know, not everybody... And ethical people doing not, it. Yeah, and yeah. not everybody likes that uh, sort of thing. But if you like that sort of thing, Spotlight is a fantastic movie. Yeah, and it's a great story that, yeah. to be told. Um, so I had Spotlight and then Dances with Wolves. Yes, yes. Oh my God, oh. she won't. She likes that. Someone's walking by. Sorry, everybody. Um, so Dances with Wolves is kind of like a family yes. um, folklore. Uh, can, uh, no, um, I can't. Uh, this was a big deal with my dad, one of my dad's favorite movies. Um, so much so that he used to wake us up on Christmas morning, <laughs> blaring the Dances with Wolves soundtrack. So it's even a little Christmas movie for me too, as well, wow. for some reason. Roxy, stop, please. Hey. So sorry, everybody. She's wound up today. She um, so yeah. And, and look, I just love the movie. It's a wonderful movie. I quote it. Most days, <laughs> I can't hear the word stand without saying something. Buffalo, um, I can speak the whole um, sentence, full sentences that the Native Americans speak. So, you know, it's a good movie, though. It's a great movie. Um, so that's movies I like. Okay. Movies you hate. Um, two, two of them. I'll okay. get closer to the microphone. Sorry. Silence of the Lambs. Never seen it. Uh... I turned it off. Okay. It's not because you were scared. My, no, it's just it's not my thing. I, I wasn't really scared. Creeped out a little bit. Um, uh-huh. Just I don't I don't like that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and Gladiator. So, first off, Silence of the Lambs. I refuse to watch because it's too scary for me. Okay. Uh, I put Gladiator in here. I've never seen it. I have no desire to see it. So I couldn't really say that I hate it. I just had to put it here to say if I could pick out a movie that to me would be the worst, it would be this one. Okay. Remember a few weeks ago I amended the title of this category? Sure. To movies I don't like or have no interest in seeing. <laughs> okay. Gladiator, I I have such a disinterest in seeing it, I think I don't like it. But I have not seen it. Yeah. Right. Me neither. So that's what I put. Yeah. And okay. for very similar reasons. Uh, movies <clears throat> you secretly love. Okay, here we go. The art. The the, the artist. Yeah. yeah, I knew you were going to write that. Yeah. Can't help it. I really liked it. I really liked it. And I know you did not. I for did not. For various reasons, but 
Yeah, I thought it was clever and well done. Um, yeah. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> to each his own. Is this on? I couldn't even tell Hello? you. Hello? Can you hear me? I can. Okay. Um, this thing is moving around. Yeah, you're in um, a bad way over there. Secretly love. So for me, I just put all the musicals. So that's American in Paris, Sound of Music, My Fair Lady, and Chicago. I don't think that's a secret. No, it's not at all. But okay. you got to fit them in some categories. Yeah, so could have, could have been in, in the ones you like. Yeah. Okay. Um, embarrassed you haven't seen? I got it down to two because there's a lot I haven't seen. <laughs> and most of them I, I'm okay with not seeing. Right. But these are two that I've always wanted to see. Yeah. And haven't. Now I'm a little embarrassed. Okay. Um, Casablanca. Me too. I have that on my list. Okay. I, have, I don't really have a desire to watch it, but yeah. I am embarrassed I haven't seen right. the whole thing. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Um, and one flew over the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> That's the same one on mine. Really? Those are the same two I wrote down. That's funny. Now that one I do want to see because there is a sh- TV show coming out. Is it Ryan Murphy doing it? Someone's doing a television show about Nurse Ratchet and kind of her origin story and why she became Nurse Ratchet. Um, so I I'm really interested in the show. I think that's going to be good. So now I'm thinking I'm going to go back and watch the movie just to be certain. I mean, I, I've seen enough of it, you know, but I haven't seen the whole thing together. Okay. Yeah. Um, adding to your watch list. 12 years a slave. You never saw that? No, I hmm. haven't. Um, from here to eternity mm. and the French connection. Hmm. Cause I, well, Gene Hackman is one of my all time favorite actors. Yeah. Um, and that's the role that he, that he became famous for. Yeah. Um, but I've never seen it. Okay. So. Um, I didn't have anything on here to add to my watch list. I feel like that happens most weeks where I'm just like, you know, cause I'm, I'm kind of like that. Like if I want to see it, I watch it, mm-hmm. you know, and if it goes by, mm-hmm. then I'm usually like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to watch that. Like it's, uh, there's like a fleeting, there's a window for me to watch the movie. And if it becomes too old, I, I never really go back and watch something. So. Um, so I just wanted to talk about, again, honorable mentions, other Best Picture winners that we love. Uh, we both love Shape of Water from last, yes, last yes. year. Yeah. Um, King's Speech, Slumdog Millionaire, No Country for Old Men, you know, love Coen Brothers, love everything they do. Uh, Beautiful Mind was great. Rocky, Amadeus. I almost put Amadeus in the musical category because it kind of was, but great movie. Uh, Rain Man, classic. Sure. Schindler's List. American Beauty, which now I feel like is tainted. I loved that movie. And now because of the Kevin Spacey thing, I have a hard time watching him in anything. Yep. Uh, I love Shakespeare in Love. I know people were really angry when it won that, that year. Um, I put Titanic on my list. I don't think that's a great movie. I definitely don't think it deserved to win Best Picture. Um, but it is one of those when it's on, I watch it. You know, it's just one it of was, those background noise movies. It was the right movie at the right time. Um, I don't think it was. I think it was. What? I think that's why it was so popular and and won. Let me look because I did pull out to to be able because I thought we might have conversations about it. Well, you're having a hell of a time over there. So, Titanic was up against as good as it gets. The Full Monty, Good Will Hunting, and L.A. Confidential. I would have definitely given it to Good Will Hunting, Hunting, yeah, over Titanic. But yeah. you know whatever well it was a big movie people go crazy for james cameron and i just can't stand them so while that movie is good enough it's just you know like i've never seen the other one avatar and i'm definitely not gonna watch the next one and so you know it's just he's not my thing but um people just go nuts for it so yeah the only movies of his i really liked are the terminators yeah and not all of them and not all of them no yeah second one's best so Okay, we're going to get off of here because I'm we got to go, go corral the dog. <laughs> Jesus Christ. She's going crazy. Um, okay, so thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, I th- we do have a sale going on in our Etsy shop right now. Everything is 15% off. Um, so check that out on our website, watchingmystories.com. And hopefully we're going to be getting some more T-shirt uh, designs up. Yep, just need to get on the graphic designer. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, I hope this was just as entertaining, even though we really just kind of rambled. But um, we will be back next week with lots to talk about. We will. Okay. Until then, I'll be watching my stories. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye.